All right, so folks, you're welcome to yet another exciting edition of the show. Show is now here on Joy Prime. As always, we bring you the latest update in the world of entertainment. And it's a Thursday, so we're getting to it like we're supposed to. You know what I mean? All right, my name is KMJ, and you got to stick with me. I'm putting things in order. Mercury Quay has spoken, and actress Gloria Shafu recently said that the organizers of the Ghana DJ Awards has not paid her for emceeing this year's awards show. Now, the CEO of Ghana DJ Awards, who doubled up as a presenter at Hedder Firm in an interview, said that there was a misunderstanding somewhere, but Gloria and himself are making sure things are in order. Here's Mercury Quay. I've had, you know, um, a few messages come to my WhatsApp this morning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so basically, what was it? I heard Gloria Safo had, you know, said that she had not been paid for, uh, you know, uh, performing at the DJ Awards. As a matter of fact, I even did not know whatever arrangement it was, you know, for that. But I think it's it's pure misunderstanding. I have had, you know, a very good talk with um, Gloria this morning. We haven't spoken for a while, you know. She's my long-time girlfriend, you know. So we, we have not spoken for a while. And um, I think she was a little piece from what she told me that she was expecting at least we had a conversation after the awards and uh, it didn't get to happen. So basically, I think it's just a little misunderstanding. But as I speak with you, um, we have we, we have spoken and um, everything is okay. So basically, as the way it, it was, it was misunderstanding. It was a misunderstanding. We're waiting for yourself and his three music people to come and also <laughs> respond to this. <laughs> Artists using Juju to produce his songs doesn't make sense. Magnum shades uh, a shine. <laughs> when I hit the road, other babies want to come and stay. But I give them one touch and make them go. All the side things just be play. And they know my baby give me them. Anything I do, she give me them. At the time, God Almighty. Sensational soul singer Ishan somewhere last week in an interview posted that most Ghanaian musicians seek spiritual backing or better still, Juju to actually fuel their popularity in the music industry. Now, according to Ishan, a Malam once requested her for pubic hair for rituals in order to produce hit songs. Now, besides the artists like Du Patrick, Tiny, Floating Stone have all voiced that Juju is real in the Ghana music industry. That renowned producer Kumatis Magnum has refuted claims that using Juju has what it takes to help an artist produce his songs. To him, if Juju or whatever works as communicated by Shen, then everyone can get up and write on Juju to make a hit song. I don't believe in that Juju stuff. To champion a hit song, otherwise everyone could get up and consult a Juju man or better still, Malam for hit songs. Now Magnum said this in an interview, Magnum also added that a lot goes into production of a hit song. According to him, music itself is a bit complicated, but you can't downplay the effort of the artist. It's all about hard work and besides, the song should be good, good production as well as promotion. But then you can have everything right, but the song will still not blow as expected. However, the making of a hit song isn't gambling neither. Juju Magnum also insisted on that particular assertion. All right, so that's what it is on the local front. Let's get into some international news. And Chloe Kardashian opens up about anxiety becoming a working mom as well. Interesting stuff going on. Chloe Kardashian revealed on Tuesday she has fears and anxiety transitioning to being a working mother after returning to the office last week for the first time since giving birth. Now, Kardashian explained in a blog posted on her website and app that returning to work gave her a little anxiety. Now, the days leading up to my very first day back were tough, but once I started going through the motions, everything fell into place. It's like riding a bike, Kardashian wrote, and it says, on my first day back, true was past perfect while I was gone. Plus, coming home was so much fun. I acted like I hadn't seen her in forever. The reality star also expressed her fears entering her first full week as a working mother. She said her anxiety comes from entering unknown territory, but knows her daughter is in the best position uh, possible hands as well. And uh, this is actually goes with being a working mother. All right, we well, wish her well. Trevor Noah accused of racism after saying France's World Cup champs are from Africa. And Trevor Noah is in the news again, host of Comedy Central's uh, The Daily Show, is facing accusations of racism after calling the French national team 
uh, which won the World Cup last week, a team from Africa because most of its players were black. Now, Africa won the World Cup. Noah said in a segment Monday about France's 4-2 victory against Croatia on Sunday on, uh, uh, in Moscow. Here it is. Yes, I'm so excited. Africa won the World Cup. 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 I mean, look, I get it. I get it. They have to say it's the French team, but look at those guys, huh? <laughs> look at those guys. You don't get that tan by hanging out in the south of France, my friends. <laughs> Basically, if you don't understand, France is Africa's backup team, right? Once Senegal and Nigeria got knocked out, that's who we root for, you know? It's like, it's like when Paul Simon wins a Grammy, we're like, yes, we'll take that too. Thank you very much. And I still remember when Paul Simon actually won a Grammy. Everybody was saying he's from South Africa and all that. Well, that's what it is. Now, Noah's remark actually weren't received well on social media. Interestingly, with most French natives noting that uh, nearly every team member, regardless of their race, was born and raised in France. Now, Kevin Razzi, a French comedian, also criticized and says the Daily Show host for uh, regating the uh, racist joke that has circulated in France. Now, this is what he said, and this is what racists say about our team here in France, he wrote. Though, given the benefit of the doubt, you didn't know, now you know. So, yes, if you didn't know, now you know. But that's what it is on the international front. Let's get into some box office and check out what exactly we're talking about. Child stars who completely failed at being famous. I was so sure looking like this would make me popular <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, what do guys want anyway actually look guys want a girl who, who's sweet and, and kind and smart just... all right so Tatiana Marie Sol Ali is an American actress and singer she is known for her role as Ashley Banks on the NBC sitcom The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air from 1990 to 1996 and she failed Away from that, Jonathan Lipnicki is also another person you want to look at. It's beautiful. Yeah, but she's not finished. When are you going to finish it? Well, me and my dad were building her, but I decided to stop. How come? I'm too little for a race like that. Little? You're not little. Well, not to me. Nicky Jonathan was a hot commodity among the Hollywood casting agencies for children's roles in the late 90s and early 2000s. Now, his notorious roles in Stuart Little and Jerry Maguire paved his way for a successful future in the entertainment industry. The next person we're talking about is Brenda Song. Check it out. I so should have expected this. Ever since second grade, everything I do, she has to do. Thanks a lot. Well, this one's mine. Nobody's gonna give her my vote for a stale cookie. Even your brother? He's got my vote. Oh. Any other Disney Channel viewer was aware of Brenda Song's success as London tipped on on the hit comedy series The Suit Life of Zack and Cody, portraying an airhead hotel heiress. And Song was also one of the Disney's biggest stars, in case you didn't know about it. Now, the next person at number seven is Keisha Knight Pullier. Is this? This is Bud. <laughs> well, Bud. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Heard so much about you. Can he stay here and play? Uh, we have to call his parents. His mom's waiting outside in the car. Okay, pardon me. Nisha Knight Pulliam is an American actress. She is known for her childhood role as Ruby Hashtable, uh, the youngest child of Cliff and Claire Hashtable, at just at the age of 5 to 13 on the NBC sitcom The Cosby Show. In case you didn't know her, and these are people who actually began very well, unfortunately never got a chance to be as famous as they have ever wanted to be. And that would end the very first edition of Showbiz Now right here. And the first bulletin, of course, at 11, Ivy is going to be on at 12. I'll come back again. Many thanks to you for watching. Many thanks to the production team for always making it happen. And of course, stay beautiful as always. Adipa has got me, as always, my costume and my name, KMJ, and I was born to talk.